Hello everyone and welcome again to this lecture. In this lecture, I want to go over some more examples of proving uh, vector spaces. So in the last video, I think I proved one and uh, it was a vector space. Here I want to show you some examples that are not vector spaces and how the 10 axioms fail. Now, before starting the examples, just uh, to refresh your memories, again, we have, I this notation is for vector addition. That's how I show it. So we have five axioms for vector addition, and uh, I will go over this. But uh, most of the time when you start a proof for to see if it's vector space, the best thing to do is to define u, v, w, that are going that are in V and your scalars here I said C and V are scalars and these are real numbers. So C is a real number and V is a real number. Now <clears throat> you can separate those axioms. You can start uh, the first one we said U plus V is in V. That means closure under addition uh, vector addition. U plus V is V plus U, that's the community property u plus parentheses v plus w is u plus v plus w associative property v has a zero vector such that u plus the zero vector is u that's called the additive identity and uh, of course minus u such that u plus minus u is going to give you zero and that's called the additive inverse so you can start with those five, and then once done, you can go to scalar multiplication. Now, CU must be in V. That's uh, we call closure under scalar multiplication. C times U plus V, CU plus CV, that's the distributive property. C plus D times U, that's also the distributive property that's distributing the vector. So you have, you can call this distributive property one and distributed property two. C parenthesis du is a CD inside the parenthesis times u. This is the associative property for scalar multiplication. And one times u is u, which is the scalar multiplicative or the scalar identity. Now let's go over an example. So you're given a set and uh, that's on Again, the components of the vector x, y, and uh, it says x is greater than or equal to zero, and y is a real number. Now, before I start this proof, I define u, v, and w. So u, of course, is x1, y1, v is x2, y2, and w is x3, y3. For all these three vectors, since they're in s, x, one x2 and x3 are greater than zero. So like it mentioned here. And y2, y1, y2, y3 are real numbers. So, and of course you have to define your scalars because we're gonna be working with those. First u plus v is x1 plus y1 plus x2 plus y2. And that's what we get x1 plus x2, y2, y1 plus y2. If x1 is a positive number and x2 is a positive number, then x1 plus x2 uh, or zero is greater than or equal to, will be greater than or equal to zero. And the sum of two real numbers is again a real number. So it is closed under addition or uh, vector addition. U plus B, you can write that as x1 plus x2 using the components y1 plus y2 and that's uh, going to be you can change that these are just numbers so the adding numbers uh, is commutative and that's going to be y2 plus uh, y1 and you can separate them and then and that becomes v plus u so the commutative property works associative property you can just use the same thing this is pretty long, but I'm sure by now you know how to do it. You can use, again, the components just like that, and it will work. So, and I put use the components uh, 
use the components and it will work. So try that yourself. It's pretty straightforward. And I have that in my last example in the last video. U plus the zero vector in this case is X1 by one plus the, and that's O2 zero. And again, you can write that, you know, you get the same thing and you get the, just the vector U. So a additive identity works. Number five, U plus minus U, use the components. And if you do that, you get the zero vector. So we do have an additive inverse. Six starts with scalar multiplication, axiom number six. If we do C times U, C times X1, X2 is uh, C times X1 and uh, times and that should be Y1. So it's gonna be C times X1 times C times Y1. And notice something here, if C is a negative number, then C times X1 will be negative. And we can't have that because this set is defined to have X or the first component to be a positive number. So now go, going back to that. So in this case, it's going to be, this is going to be negative. And I put a little example, C is equal to negative one, U is one, two. If U is one, two, then C U is going to be negative one times one, two, and we get a negative number there and we can't have that. So we can stop right there because this is not closed under the scalar multiplication. So once one axiom fails, you can just stop right there and say this is not a vector space now i did to go over all the axioms one by one until i got to the sixth one and <clears throat> so it doesn't work but sometimes if you see an axiom is not going to work look at how that set is defined and you know one axiom is not going to work and it's not a vector space you can directly go to that one and prove it that way in this case i could have just go directly to this one and show it's not a vector space. Now, the other one is the set X, the vector, the components are X one half times X, and uh, X is a real number vector space. So <clears throat> same way, define U, V, and W, and your scalars. Most of the time, this is gonna work. And U plus B, if you use the components, you're gonna, you can get uh, V plus U. So if you, oh, if U plus V, you can get that. And again, this is gonna be real and uh, that's gonna be also real. So we get the same type right here when you do it is exactly like that one. So it is closed under vector addition. U plus V, use the components. You can again change them just like the example before, and you can see the commutative property works. Associative property works the same way. Use the components, again, separate them, and you can always you change the parentheses and you get that. So associative property is okay here. U plus the zero vector, so you take U and then plus the zero vector and you get this U also. So we do have an additive identity. Same as the additive inverse. Again, if you do that, you're gonna get the zero vector. So all the five axioms for vector addition so far works. Uh, they work for this example. Let's go to scalar multiplication. C times U, we get C times X1 plus one half. You can write it like that, same form. So it is closed under scalar multiplication. C times U plus V, use the components. And this is pretty straightforward. You can write it like that and you can write this as, you can distribute that and then Write it, multiply it to each vector, 
and it works. So distributed property number one is okay. C plus D times U, same thing. Use the components and you can distribute the vector inside. But the components, it's C times U plus, uh, C times U plus D times U. So second distributive property works also. C times parentheses D U, use the components as I did here. Now you have the D here, you can take the D out and then put a parenthesis. So you can write it C times D times, uh, uh, times uh, U1, or you can just call that U. And let me fix this also. So this is also just just you instead of you one. So finally, one times you you can uh, take one multiply it by the components, and then you get the same vector. So scalar identity works also. For this one, all 10 axioms are satisfied, so S is a vector space. I have another example for you. Is the set of first degree polynomials in the form of AX, where A cannot be equal to zero, very important, whose graph passes through the origin of vector space. So I did the same thing here. I said U is AX, V is BX, and W is CX. And I called alpha and beta for my scalars because we do have ABCs here. U plus V is A plus AX plus BX. That's A plus BX. And uh, we can call A plus B a plus B to be K here is completely your choice. However, if A is equal to negative B or B equals to negative A, A plus B will be zero. So K will be zero. And we cannot have that because here it says the coefficient cannot be zero. So this is not closed under the vector addition. So the first axiom did not work, so we can stop right there and say it's not a vector space. Please try some more examples uh, from uh, the uh, textbook or any way. And uh, again, if you define most of the time when you start this proof, if you define U, V, W, and start, and of course your two scalars, and start one by one checking those axioms. And uh, if they all work, then it's a vector space. If one of them fails, and you see that it's going to fail from the beginning, think about it. First, you start the all the 10 axioms. And if you feel that one of them is going to fail, start from that one. and uh, if it fails, then you don't have to continue and then show all of them. One doesn't work, that means it won't be a vector space. I think that's it for this lecture. I'll try to have more examples for you in the next lecture. Thank you, everyone. Have a great one, and I'll see you in my next video.